Uh, and I'm going to hand over uh, to the wonderful Vera Zakharov, who's going to talk about derail. Can we give her a big round of applause? <laughs> she, comes with, she comes with baby Rowan. Hi. I don't know. I'm, I'm going to see if I, last time he was like a tiny lump of a baby. Uh, prior to that, I didn't dare um, do talks with babies. So we'll see how we go. Um, I might put him on the ground, or hmm, what's safer? I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna put him in the carrier. Hold on, guys. Sorry. These are like, it's like, it's like a delightful, uh, uh, it's a delightful mystery bag. No, it's a, a lot less fun than a, like picking a random candy out of a bag. Um, so tonight he is very wily and excited. So, whoa. <laughs> Sorry guys, hold on. I didn't know if he was going to sleep or... No, no, it's okay baby. It's okay baby. I agreed to this before uh, while I was still pregnant uh, when Tim contacted me and I was like, sure? <laughs> uh, my first baby, uh, my, well, who's now a toddler, uh, slept for England. So I was like, oh, I'm going to feel... Uh, happened the second time around as well, but this one's a lot wilder. <laughs> Yay! Yeah! Okay, cool. I think we're almost there. Sorry, guys. Hello! Oh, don't encourage him. Do not encourage him. He'll think this whole talk is about him and he'll, uh, yeah, he'll, um, he'll steal the spotlight. That'll be nice. Hi! Hello! Um, I could probably do this talk without the microphone, but I won't. I um, won't be normal. Um, so, hi! Let's test this, yay. Okay, cool. Um, hi, my name is Vera. I'm just going to jump right in uh, on Britain's dismantled railways and how to keep the love alive. Um, so a little bit about me. I'm Vera. Um, I'm a food campaigner by day um, and I'm, I don't know, a nature freak by every moment of my life. Um, I um, I love connecting with nature. I love exploring. I'm a huge fan of cycling and walking. I love old things, like trees. And I like new things too, like uh, my, like my spawn. Um, but here I'm going to speak about uh, one old thing that I just love, and that's the dismantled railway. Now, just to let you guys know, I will be saying dismantled rather than disused. I really have a bugbear with disused because they are not disuse, even if they've been largely forgotten by human beings. So, um, what's the deal with dismantled railways? Do I care? Oh, by the way, there are, you can see which ones I'm talking about. There's always like a little title of uh, which dismantled railway I'm talking about. Um, so, uh, dismantled railways, they, um, they stir the imagination. They, they, um, they invite adventure. Um, and they're this beautiful meld of uh, human creation and uh, the beauty of nature. Um, and I love the, the freewheeling um, cycle pathways um, and the way that they allow you to just stretch your stamina for miles. Um, and indeed, that's the way I discovered dismantled railways. Um, I love the decomposing Victorian grandeur um, of dismantled railways and um, the, the kind of the man-made hallways that just invite wonder and stir the imagination. Um, and uh, I love that kind of, um, that just like rough, and beautiful gutter puck and, uh, and aesthetic uh, for anyone else here who's uh, been a fan of, you know, sneaking into abandoned buildings and stuff. It's just really beautiful. Um, but I think, well, like above all, um, something that really fascinates me is, is the way the Central Railways, they sort of, um, they show us really like nature's dominion over humanity. Um, because you really, you get to watch something decompose kind of in real time. Because as you'll find out, um, our Britain's Dismantled Railways are a fairly kind of modern thing. So we're watching them as they go through this transformation in real time that, you know, this isn't sort of, this is kind of a young archaeology, if you will. Um, so I wanted to start with, <laughs> I wanted to start with the dream that I once had. Um, so come with me on this little adventure. About 10 years ago, so when, when my partner and I moved um, to the UK from the US, um, you know, we pretty soon kind of like explored Sussex. And I did know that there, had there used to be 
a railway line uh, between Lewis and Uckfield, because I, I'd seen this on OS maps, and I was like, what's, what's this dismantled railway? Um, anyway, so we, and, you know, we go on walking there, but one that I had a dream that um, I was doing, I was collecting like oral histories of this mystery railway that uh, went from Lewis to Barkham to, no, not Barkham, sorry, Isfield, um, and Uckfield. And, and in the dream, I, um, I like, I hitchhiked, because uh, there weren't any bus lines running to these, so I'd go to the villages and I'd collect, hey baby, um, hold on. Hi, are you, can I just like turn you around maybe, huh? Um, yeah, and so I, I, in this dream, I, um, yeah, I kind of took photos, and it was just like a really beautiful dream. And then um, when I woke up, and I actually Googled it, like, <laughs> um, this train, I mean, it closed in like the 60s and 70s, so it was really like, it was just like these 70s trains, it was like not romantic at all. But in any case, I was like, you know what, mmm, dismantle railways. And so that, uh, thus was born my hobby and uh, passion when I tell people that not everything I do is food related. Um, so here is a little video of me uh, doing a bit of hands free. Um, and uh, when my son, oh, is this on? Yeah. yeah, when my son sees this video, he likes to remind me that, ah, oh, I, I was a baby in your belly in there. So that was actually the day after my older son was conceived. Uh, my friend and I cycled from, uh, from London to Brighton. And I'm convinced, because this was like after a failed IVF at the time, uh, I'm convinced that I actually helped, um, helped him to, you know, help, help that magic to happen. Um, so, yeah, and uh, that was worth way. No, yeah, worth way. Um, come on. So, um, I want to tell you guys a little bit about um, East and West Sussex, the dismantled railways. We have quite a few. Uh, I won't use the clicker, because obviously I don't have any more hands. But as you can see, the, the blue lines are the railways that are currently in use. Um, the, the green ones are um, the dismantled railways that actually have been uh, maintained and are used as public rights of way, as cycle paths. Um, the yellow ones, uh, sorry, the purple ones are the, um, the heritage railways. Um, so you'll see kind of like going from left to right, there's the Bluebell Railway um, heading towards East Grinstead. Um, there's a tiny, tiny lavender line in Isfield. Um, there's the Spa Valley Railway up in like Erridge and Tunbridge Wells. And then there's another one here, the East Sussex and Kent Railway as well. Um, and I believe there's, um, I actually missed out a dismantled railway somewhere kind of closer to Hastings and St. Leonard's. So do, I do apologize to residents thereof. Um, and of course the yellow ones are the ones that are um, completely like inaccessible, well, mostly inaccessible and overgrown and, and nothing's happening with them in effect at the moment. So. Um, Okay, how do we do this? Okay, um, but then, uh, so yeah, so basically, I, you know, I won't kind of go into the history of British Railways, but, you know, obviously, the whole country, absolutely covered in them, I mean, like, really, like, uh, just the world over, like, a really beautiful thing, and um, there were railways everywhere, and at some point, um, it came to a halt. Um, rather than a halt, it was kind of a series of sputters, so our kind of uh, British Railway kind of era has slowed down, and so what happened? Well, hi. What's up? Yes, that's great. Please, thank you, sir. Yes, cue next slide, please. So, what happened? Well, cue <laughs> ominous music. The villain is about to enter the picture. Next slide, please. Um, uh, next slide. So, uh, any, anybody have, know who this guy is? <laughs> of course, you all do. Because I mean, like, he's just he's, wow. This is just is he is well known. He is known as, uh, and I quote, Britain's most hated civil servant. So what did he do? So uh, Richard Beeching, he was the chairman of uh, British Railways, uh, and in the 60s, in 1963, he was, um, he was tasked with producing the reshaping of the British Railways report in 1963. This led to the closure of over 2,300 uh, railway stations, uh, 5,000 miles of railway lines. That equates to over 50% of stations in the whole entire country and about 30% of all routes were closed down. Um, this also led to the loss of 67,000 jobs. Um, so, uh, next slide, I think. Let's see. Yes, so the, um, the beaching cuts, as they were called, they transformed the British landscape. Um, so, of course, this was precipitated by, but also leading to the growth and popularity of car ownership. Um, and so, they were, there was a lot of opposition at the time. Um, 
And uh, many of the railways that were, quite, were actually quite profitable and very popular. So it was, it was a pretty negative thing at the time. Uh, and I think in some ways still is. Um, now, look, I'm not saying that the railway system didn't need an overhaul. Um, but he was using a guillotine to like give a haircut. Um, so there are lots of conspiracies abound, um, but, um, but is, there's no doubt that um, the conservative government at the time, the commissioner report, had strong ties to the automotive and, um, and road industry. Uh, and, and of course the labor governments that uh, came after, they implemented the closures themselves. Um, they also were receiving funding from trade unions um, that had links to the, um, the, um, the uh, road and kind of like road infrastructure industries. So of course, you know, um, now uh, can we go to the next one? Let's see. Yeah, so some lines have remained in public ownership um, purchased by local authorities. This is a, a perfect example of the Cuckoo Line um, in East Sussex from Polgate to Heathfield. Um, it's, uh, it's been turned into a delightful mixed-use trail in partnership with the council and Sustrans. Um, so here you'll find the remains of, um, well, uh, the rema railway remains that have been turned into curious art. Next slide, please. Um, delightful little stations, uh, the relics of stations. Uh, next slide. Um, and really like adorable uh, displays created by local residents. Uh, when I was here with a friend um, on like a rare baby free day, we went cycling. Um, there was a child who was absolutely in tears because his grandparents were dragging him away from a Thomas the Tank Engine uh, display. And I was like, oh, is this my future? Indeed it is because, I mean, my toddler, literally one of his first words was steese, which was steam. He's completely obsessed with trains, uh, he loves Thomas, he knows all of their names. And I love it, I'm very happy, I, I do encourage it. So um, now on to, um, so oh yes, and the thing I want to say, so with the Cuckoo Trail, so it, it ends at Hithfield, it, Hithfield, it used to go all the way to um, Erich. So sadly, the trail um, could not be completed to, all the way to Erich because due to 12, just 12 crotchety landowners who refuse to have a public right of way over their land. Y'all, all right, I mean like, we're not even talking about their opening up their land entirely, just having a little public right of way. They were like, nope, nope, nope. So my dream of freewheeling from Three Bridges all the way down to Polgate via Erich remains unrealized. I think it would be a really great trail, so I wouldn't have to go down motorways up and down with my friend secretly carrying my future firstborn. Anyway, okay, next uh, slide please. So. Um, Oh no, this is just a little video. Oh yeah, so my dream, this is my dream of taking this road from three bridges uh, down from London all the way down to East Sussex. So, uh, the next slide is uh, uh, archaeology. Oh yeah, it's a So, archae railway archaeology, a primer. So, this is what really, like, this is what you came here to see. No, it isn't, but this is what's going to get really exciting. So, um, look, I'm not advocating trespass, but here are some telltale signs of forgotten railways if you want to go off the beaten path. So, um, next slide, please. So we have things like embankments on the right-hand side. You see where the bluebells are. So it's kind of like a raised piece of earth that the, uh, the railway goes on. Um, and they're, um, they're kind of inverse are called a railway cutting. So that's kind of like when it's cut into the ground, uh, into the land. Uh, of course, um, uh, you might find um, ballasts. That's the railroad gravel which, uh, how many people have ever before now known the, what the word ballast means? Anyway, a few people, but it's one of those really great words uh, when we're keeping. Um, straight wooded paths. When you see a wooded path that's like so straight, you're like, what is this, a, like Roman road? Anyway, it's probably an old railway line. Um, complex brick, brickwork, such as those Victorian bridges, uh, always a good example. Like in the middle of nowhere, like you're like in the woods, you're like, there's a bridge here. Uh, to nowhere. And uh, railway sleepers um, and rails sometimes uh, boarded up tunnels and uh, oh this one's really interesting roads and pubs with the name stationed in them. Ooh, must have been a railway here before. Um, so next, uh, next, thanks Lee, oh yeah and there's the timer, great. Okay, next slide please. So there is, so this is like OS maps, I just wanted to show you this, again I'm not going to point but you can see the dismantled railway line here, right there, um, and that tells you, uh, yeah, this is um, this is the bluebell. This is the bluebell they used to go all the way down to Lewis in Sussex. Um, so, um, and then next slide. This is what it looks like. Um, satellite. I like this is where I become a total nerd. 
Uh, don't talk to me about these things in the pub. Uh, my colleagues think I'm hilarious. But like, one of my one of my hobbies is like it's like going on like Google Earth and like finding dismantled railways and then going along them. Um, so this is the same one we just saw. So you can see this in maps. It's very it's kind of straight and very wooded. And that's really important, the wooded bit. We'll get to that in a little bit. Uh, next, uh, next slide, please. Uh, oh yeah, next one. So, um, so I wanted to mention, I'm, I might skip this in the interest of time, actually. Uh, but this is just to say I'm in Brighton and Hove. Um, this is Kemptown, and um, like my son, like again, he's obsessed with you know, trains. So he noticed that the bingo hall has this like curious train coming out of a tunnel. Um, and also there's a playground uh, a couple of miles up um, that has like a uh, kind of train theme. And that's actually an old Kemptown branch line that even most Brightonians don't know about. But it has these ghosts. So they're like they're like echoes of echoes. And this is like where I get really like, kind of uh, the creative part of me gets really excited. Is so when something disappears, there are still things around it that still echo it. And, and those kind of remain, and those kind of become the little like clues that you piece together. And indeed, my son, uh, when we were passing another part where the, the viaduct used to be, next slide, please. Uh, oh yeah, that, no, uh, next slide. <laughs> um, he noticed when we were passing, there's a Sainsbury's where this viaduct used to be on Lewis Road. It's a really busy road. And he's like, ah, it's a train station. But no, it wasn't a train station. It's just when the viaduct was there, the buildings around it, there were some buildings that were kind of built in the style, and one of those buildings had been taken over by the Sainsbury's. And so it's right there. And like a child, a three-year-old, two-year-old at the time, could be like, I smell a railway. Anyway, next slide. <laughs> um, and that's the, yeah, that's the, uh, that's the little railway, the coal railway. Anyway, look, I'm not, I don't love everything about the old railways, like coal, terrible. Anyway, next. <laughs> so, um, and this is the yeah, what it remains. Uh, next slide, please. So um, what I wanted to end on, uh, in the interest of time, is um, is this beautiful image. It's beautiful to me for sure. Um, and this is that again that old Bluebell railway line uh, between Lewis and Sheffield Park. Uh, that's the bit that's dis dismantled, disused at the moment. Um, so this place is heaving with wildlife, and it's a haven for species in decline, such as glowworms, bats, and nation's favorite bird. Who do you think would be the nation's favorite bird? Not a seagull, obviously. <laughs> it's the nightingale. I mean, everyone's obsessed with nightingales. I mean, they have been massively endangered, in decline, but they're coming back in certain places. One of the places they're coming back is this railway line, because again, if you remember those maps, it's like a line, a wooded kind of hedgerow line, unobstructed and, you know, continuous. And the insects love it, the bats love it, and birds like nightingales love it. Um, and here's just a little bit that um, you may or may not know. Um, species decline is not just precipitated by the cutting down of woodland. It's also uh, affected by the, um, the fracturing. So when you have one woodland and it's unconnected to another, a species like nightingales that might use that area to breed, they may not be able to travel to others. So what happens is inbreeding, and actually that makes a species weaker as well. So, um, uh, you know, the government knows this. Um, Natural England, um, they have this in like their policy papers, that we need green corridors. That it's not just about building, you know, um, planting trees. It's also about creating these like natural byways. And the railway lines are perfect for it. Um, so next slide, please. Oh yeah, this is what it looks like. I got better picture than this. Uh, visit my Instagram, but uh, let's move on. Um, so um, this is actually um, a Save uh, Save Barkham Bridge uh, campaign uh, based in the village of Barkham, and um, they were actually successful in stopping national highways from infilling this bridge. Um, one of the arguments was that actually there are bats that use that pathway, but also national highways. I mean, you know what they were doing? They wanted to infill all of the old dismantled railway line bridges because they didn't want to like maintain them but actually there are suspicions that they just wanted to spend uh, and underspend because otherwise you know how it's so stupid like if they don't spend a certain amount they get less the next year and so they were trying to like cement over all these things anyway they've been halted so there's been a number of campaigns and at the end I'll tell you guys a couple of petitions that are alive at the moment that I would love for you guys to sign but this is fantastic because it brought the village together and they really focused on the ecology element of it as well as the historical uh, element of it um, and really this this path should be turned into a public right-of-way I mean, it's really beautiful um, so this is kind of where I wanted to end um, you know the railway lines 
they're not they're they're more than just like Roman roads of our time. Um, they're they're kind of like the engineered manifestations of our desire lines. Um, you know the way the railway really like goes along the path of least resistance, and it's a duet between how the land offers itself to pilgrims and how its creatures, big and small, show their connection in motion. Um, so you know it moves lots of things. It can move goods and villagers and day trippers, but it can also move wildlife. And so you know this is why just because we're not traveling down these routes for various reasons doesn't mean that they shouldn't stay as a kind of commons. And so this is kind of like my appeal that, you know, railway lines dismantled or otherwise, um, we need them as a kind of public and ecological commons. Um, so I'll leave there. Um, and I just want to say, you know, this is, um, this is kind of becoming more popular, but um, this... <sighs> The biggest problem is the, the kind of highly privatized paradigm that we're living in. So maybe I am kind of, you know, advocating a bit of trespass because I think that's, that's might be what it takes is for people to love these uh, dismantled uh, railway lines again. Thank you so much. Oh, and before I finish, if you have your phones, there's two petitions. Um, one by the this, this small kind of village campaign called Protect the Ecology of Britain's Dismantled Railways. And the bigger one that's getting thousands of signatures uh, by a historic railway engineers organization is Protect the Railway Heritage from National Highways, Wrecking Ball. If you look up Protect Our Na Rail Dismantled Railways, you'll find it on change.org. Thank you so much. There is that girl.